Welcome to Real World AIP. My name is Stacy, and today I'm going to tell you my story. Basically, my AIP story, what led me to it and how it's helped me. So my main autoimmune conditions are celiac disease and Raynaud's syndrome. I also have loads of environmental allergies, food intolerances, a circadian rhythm, sleep disorder. I've suffered from stress-induced alopecia, had uterine cysts, brain fogs, dizzy spells, unexplained veins popping out of my arms, extreme fatigue, migraines, cystic acne, face getting beat red out of nowhere for no reason, chemical intolerances, chemically infected lymph nodes, carpal tunnel syndrome and psoriasis. So basically like a real health train wreck, right? Like one giant inflammatory mess. I'm happy to inform you that thanks to autoimmune paleo protocol, I'm like normal, I don't have any of that stuff. Well, I have the sleep disorder. And I have, I still have the Renauds where my fingers, I can't let them get cold or they get numb and yellow and it looks weird, like I'm dead. Um, but other than that, like all that other stuff, we're golden, we're good, I'm good, it's, I'm fixed. All of my symptoms of celiac disease and systemic inflammation are completely gone. I have no complaints about my digestion, no breakouts, no headaches, no unexplained fatigue, no hair falling out, and crystal clear mental sharpness. I have totally normal energy levels as long as I get my sleep and I don't overtrain in the gym. I'm not afraid of food or what bizarre reactions it'll give me. I see it as a tool to nourish my body. I know exactly what foods I can eat and I'll feel great on and exactly what to avoid. As an added bonus, I have less under eye circles than I had in my 20s. Because, you know, anything anti-inflammatory in nature is also going to be anti-aging. So it's another cool part of, of autoimmune paleo. Anyway, so yeah, it was a long road leading up to my current state of health. And here, here's, here's the, I'm gonna take, you trip, take you on a trip down that road. I, I'd say my autoimmune issue started before I was born. It runs in my family. We have digestive issues, asthma, allergies, and lupus. Um, I'd done the 23andMe genetic testing, and I have every freaking celiac disease marker there is. Like, why didn't they have this when I was a kid? It would have saved me so much trouble. So much trouble. I also have genetic glitches that prevent me from detoxifying toxins and medications properly in both phase one and phase two liver detox. So basically, I will suffer more from pesticides in my food or growth hormone in my meat. Still, I had relatively normal health during my childhood. It's when I hit adolescence that things started to go wonky. It's when I developed my circadian rhythm disorder. At age 16, I used to have anxiety attacks that had me call on 911 because I really thought I was dying. I thought I was having a heart attack and I couldn't breathe. I would have dizzy spells. I would almost blackout at my job. I saw doctors, they actually, they they had me do an MRI to rule out a possible brain tumor and then they tested to see if I had diabetes and you know, none, I had none of that. By age 21, I remember complaining all the time about being bloated. Like I was so skinny, skinny, skinny and bloated. Oh my gosh, like five months pregnant bloated. Like my digestive system just wasn't working right. So this is when I started to research how to eat healthy to feel well. Um, that was 20 years ago. It was also around that time in 97 that I received a series of three rabies pre-exposure vaccinations because I worked at an animal shelter with animals of unknown origin. And I think that that triggered my genetically predisposed autoimmunity to really like kick in because that's kind of the time when it just all hit the fan for me. I started having brain fog issues. I'd be at work and I'd be fine and then I'd get my 15 minute break so I'd go to 7-Eleven and get a can of soup or frozen meal and I'd eat and then I'd get like I feel lightheaded and I'd have this extreme like brain fog like a total lack of mental focus and clarity kind of like I had done two shots or smoked some really good weed. It was just bizarre. I didn't do shots and I didn't smoke any weed. All I had was like turkey soup. <laughs> I also remember I had a guy I dated, um, he's over and he looked at my arms and he made fun of me. He's like, oh, your veins are popping out. And they were, and I don't know why. Just all the veins on my arm just like popped out from there. Like, I don't know, blood pressure. I don't know. I mean, my body just did weird things on me all the time that I couldn't figure out. And now I, I see, I look back and I go, oh yeah, systemic inflammation. My 20s were basically ruined by systemic inflammation. Outside of work, my main hobby became going to doctors to figure out what the heck was wrong with me. And going to the library to figure out what the heck was wrong with me. Because, you know, that was before everyone had a computer at home and they could just Google it. I, you know, I didn't have smartphones. I tried following a strict low glycemic index eating plan. Um, I was still lightheaded and brain foggy and bloated, so okay, it wasn't low blood sugar. That was the root of all my woes. 
at age 22, I was on like an extreme whole grain and beans kick. I even went vegetarian for about a year. I ate so much oatmeal and quinoa and millet and tofu and soy milk. Well, my health got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. My skin was so bad, I actually went on prescription acne medication. My digestive system was a mess. I had awful, unexplained fatigue. It felt like someone like stuck a hose in my belly button and just like <laughs> sucked all every last drop of energy out of me and then filled my legs with sand, like just sandbags like I had dragged around. <laughs> it's the kind of fatigue that you just can't explain. It's, it's just like overwhelming, debilitating fatigue. <sighs> that time I was a veterinary technician. And um, I used to, you know, so that's you know, an important job. You, you have to be mentally clear, you know, you're dispensing medications to pets. And, you know, I, I was a surgery assistant too. So, um, you know, I, I had to monitor the anesthesia and I was doing dentals. And you just, you need your brain to be working to do this kind of job. And I never made a mistake or hurt anybody's pet. But anyway, tangent. I used to eat brown rice with my lunch every day at work. And after lunch, I'd get that brain fog. But I would just try to like get through it and pretend I was okay. Um, kind of like if you had a drinking problem and you went to work with you know some alcohol and you just pretend you're not drunk, you know? <laughs> That's what I was doing with this brain fog. Except it was so obvious that at my employee evaluation, my boss actually said after lunch, I seemed spacey. It was that bad. I mean, it's just freaking bizarre. But apparently, you know, the brown race and I don't get along. It, it, there is a such thing as having cerebral inflammation from from food intolerance and all, and I guess that's must have been what was happening, but I just got like the most severe like brain fog. Just brain wasn't working. So I'd go to doctors and I'd be like, I feel spacey after I eat. My stomach's a mess. Chicken gives me migraines. <clears throat> I'm tired all the time. Please help me. Please help me figure out what the heck is going on with my freaking body. And um, they were just like, thinking to themselves, oh boy, we have a real weirdo hypochondriac on our hands. <laughs> um, that's totally the vibe I got. I had read enough to realize I had all the symptoms of intestinal permeability, aka leaky gut. But I got laughed in the face when I used that term, told there was no such thing. When I complained of my extreme quality of life disrupting fatigue, I was practically patted on the head like, it's okay, Blondie, everybody gets tired after they eat, that's normal. One doctor tried to put me on Prozac to help my food allergies. My allergist said if I really had an allergy, my throat would swell. There's no such thing as a food intolerance. And after a battery of tests of all kinds, another doctor, who actually was probably the nicest one, he tried. He, you know, he tested me for almost everything under the sun. And then finally he just said, you know, it seems like maybe something off with your central nervous system, which I wonder had to do with those rabies shots, I don't know. Um, and he said, just try to enjoy your life as much as you can. Just try to live and enjoy your life instead of always focusing on your health. In spite of all this, um, the tests were clearly showing that something was wrong. The doctors just didn't know what it was. Um, you know, I had the skin prick testing and it showed allergies to just about everything that they tested. Wheat, dairy, dust, dogs, cats. So clearly my immune system is like a little overactive, you think? Blood allergy testing showed reactions to 10 out of the 15 foods they tested. Eggs, soy, rice, barley, oats, peanuts, chicken, corn, potatoes. I hate potatoes every day. That's so freaking weird. I mean, what, what? An endoscopy showed intestinal inflammation, even though I had by then placed myself on a strict gluten-free diet because of all my library research. I mean, and this was back in 2001, before most people ever heard of gluten, and you know, doctors thought that celiac was as common as being born with two heads. Ultrasound showed ruptured cysts in my uterus, because you know, my hormones were wonky too. <laughs> Blood testing confirmed I had antibodies to gliadin, the protein found in gluten. It's also found to have extremely high levels of immunoglobin E, aka IgE, which is often found in people who have allergic reactions and asthma and certain autoimmune diseases. So hello, doctors, hello. <laughs> you didn't, you know, nothing clicked when you saw that. <laughs> I also had extremely low intestinal secretory immun immunoglobin A, IgA, which plays a really important role in immunity and gut health. If you have very low, my levels were like severely low. Um, low levels of this can make someone more susceptible to having increased intestinal permeability, aka leaky gut that I got left in the face about. On the bright side, um, my other blood panels were normal. I had normal digestive enzyme um, enzyme levels. Um, my lead and mercury levels were normal, and I tested completely clear of Giardia, Candida, parasites over, bad bacteria. So I had none of that. I also had no diagnosis. 
So even though I had so many test results to prove that things were off in my digestive and immune system, I started to think just based on the way that people treated me and, and how a lot of doctors like treated me that maybe it was all in my head, you know? So maybe that's how I could fix myself, just by fixing my head. So I researched somatization disorder and, you know, I tried to tell myself it's all in your head and now we're going to talk ourselves out of it. And that didn't work because it really wasn't all in my head. And I also at that time, I, I remember taking like, a, are you depressed quizzes and reading about depression, which if anyone knows me, that is not me. I am not a depressive type at all. Um, anyway, I remember around that time, I went on a houseboat vacation with my then boyfriend and his older brother and friends. And at dinner, um, I just wanted to be normal. I wanted to seem normal. I guess I didn't realize how much of a problem I had with nightshades. I don't know, but I ate eggplant parmesan with marinara sauce so basically like overloaded my system with nightshades you eggplant red sauce oh. so i paid for that i laid in bed for hours i had a fever i was red all over i was wheezing i was having heart palpitations and then after that i just ate out of the big mixed nut jar i ate mixed nuts for the rest of this trip on this houseboat and they all thought i had an eating disorder um, just things got to the point where I was afraid to eat anything when I needed to function well. Like, I, I used to keep a food journal so I could try to link my weird physical symptoms with the things that I ate. And in one entry I wrote, The only thing I eat that doesn't make me tired or hot is apples. I would starve all day and just bring apples to work for snacks. Like, then get home and eat an entire day's worth of calories and then just pass out in a coma and sleep it off. And none of this had anything to do with weight. I was always, you know, very skinny. Like, I just wanted to feel good. So, yeah, one year I lived on nuts and dried fruit in an attempt to feel normal. Just try to eliminate as many things as possible and eat what I consider to be the most innocent things. I was always reading about elimination and rotation diets, keeping food journals. I, mean, I tried Atkins. I, I tried vegetarianism. I tried the zone diet where you, you know, you eat 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat, and that's all measured and weighed. And these, you know, <laughs> macronutrient ratios are going to give you health and vitality. And that, not for me, it didn't. Um, I tried Fit for Life, where I only ate fruit for the first half of every day, and then I only ate foods in special combinations. I mean, I summer-sized it for a while. I read Sugar Blues. I read every popular health book I could get my hands on. Went to, I was at the bookstore or library. By age 24, I was waitressing at a really, really, really busy, really, really, very stressful downtown restaurant. I started having extreme migraines every time I ate chicken, which had always been like a dietary staple for me. I mean, I tested this too. I was like, no, not chicken. I eat chicken all the time. No. And every time I ate it, it was like, boom, boom, boom. So I stopped eating chicken. Um, anyway, I also started having more hormonal issues, like extreme cramps and, you know, cystic acne. I remember by my last busy summer there, I worked there for five years, and summers were so busy, like so freaking busy, just hordes of people rushing around with big trays and just always like stress and a sense of urgency, you know, for hours at a time. This place was like packed. I was so stressed, I just started crying all the time at the littlest things. I would just, just, just cry. And all of my hair started falling out in clumps. I mean, it just like started falling. Like I was losing all my hair. Like it got to the point where I go to work and I have to like, you know, really sit and like brush it a certain way and spray it and hide all the bald spots. And I went to my boss and I begged her, can I please just do three shifts? All my hair's falling out. And she didn't believe me. And I couldn't show her because if I took my hair down, I'd never get it back up to cover all those bald spots. So I quit because my hair was falling out. <laughs> and, um... I actually sported a pixie cut for a while. Oh, picture. So um, that's when I finally left that job. I realized I, I just can't handle like stress like normal people. Like It, it what, triggers my autoimmunity. Um, it makes me physically sick. And I think I was in denial until then. Well, I didn't realize I had an autoimmune disease, or not at least not the magnitude of it. I was, you know, always pushing myself to do more, to wake up early, stay up late, work, pay bills, go to school, and have a social life. Other girls were doing it. I just felt like weaker than normal people. And around that time, you know, I got married, and so I just kind of gave up on, like, researching what the heck was wrong with me and trying different eating plans and keeping food journals. I was like, I'm going to take that doctor's advice, the last one. He was like, just try to enjoy your life. So that's what I did for 10 years. I 
gave up trying to feel truly healthy. Well, I avoided my major triggers, which I knew were um, gluten, corn, poultry, and tomatoes. Those were my biggest, biggest triggers. And then for the next year, 10 years, I lived on beef, um, canned clams and canned tuna, Hershey bars, uh, dairy products, white potatoes, and an occasional can of green beans or carrots. Just enough to keep the worst major symptoms at bay, but never achieving true health. I just kind of gave it up. I just wanted to live my life. I was sick of searching. Um, and it wasn't until 2015, at age 39, that I started to attempt to find health again. And honestly, my motivation was that I was single again, and I was dating, and I didn't want my stupid digestive system getting in the way. So I was like, all right, I'm going to fix my gut. I'm going to heal my gut with the help of the internet and all this, you know, new research that must have come out in the last 10 years. You don't go on dates all like bloated or just whatever. Just, I wanted to have a normal digestive system. I tried the Weston Price Foundation guidelines to soak and ferment and sprout non-gluten gra gra grains to make them more digestible. But my gut was too far gone to benefit and all the fermented stuff and the kimchi and all just sent me into histamine overload. I have a histamine intolerance on top of that, all that, which probably developed because of the leaky gut, whatever. Anyway, the, that was a fail. I drove over state lines to obtain raw milk after I read Sally Fallon's Nourishing Traditions. <laughs> that was a big fail. <laughs> That's another video. Um, I tried the select carbohydrate diet and the G G GAPS diet, gut and psychology syndrome, which are very similar. Um, and I had no change, so that ruled out, you know, bacterial, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Obviously, that wasn't a problem for me because going on those eating plans didn't fix me. Um, I also tried a low FODMAP diet for like six months. Um, so that didn't do anything for me. So we ruled out fructose malabsorption and yay, I can eat garlic and onions. Um, then I went on, I think there may have been a couple of more things I tried. I don't know, I remember I did a low food chemical diet where you avoid salicylates and glutamates and histamine. And I do have a problem with histamine and glutamates I do um, have an issue with, but they're not in most unprocessed foods anyway. Um, salicylate, thank God, I'm fine with salicylates, thank goodness, because they're in all the good stuff, like, you know, everything that's brightly colored and full of antioxidants, they have high salicylates. Some kids with, um, autism react to those, you know, they have to go on a, like, well, whatever, tangent. So, anyway, I went on AIP, and then I got, like, 75, 80% better, and then, um, I stayed on AIP, and I, I cut down on my histamine intake, and, um, I'm fixed! Yay! <laughs> Wasn't that easy. Not. So, yeah. I'd really like the process to be easier for you. Um, a lot easier. And for it to take less than 20 years. So, that's my story. And that's why I'm here. And if you like my video, subscribe. I put a new one out every Thursday. And um, hopefully I'll see you soon. And until then, be healthy!